a few weeks ago, God spoke to us very clearly on the final words of a dying man. God spoke to us on the last words a man said. You remember those final words were the words of the dying thief. The last sentence he ever spoke, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. The last words he ever said, and yet those last words, that final sentence, counted for eternity. When he spoke those final words, he had Christ's assessment. He had Christ's answer. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. The last words, I, of a dying man. Do you remember the last words of Judas Iscariot? Did you ever listen to the last words he ever said? I have sinned. He got that part right. In that I have betrayed innocent blood. That's the last thing he said. But the next thing the Bible says is he went out and he hung himself. You see, friends, listen to me, we're all staring death in the face. I wonder this time, 24 hours ago, I wonder did Scylla Black ever consider she'll be in eternity this evening. Do you mind the rich farmer in Luke 12? Do you remember what his final words were? I will say to my soul, I have much led up for many years, eat, drink, and be merry. Those were the last words he spoke. Well, they're the last words ever recorded. You see, all of us are like that boy in Luke 12. We fail to understand that every day we live, we're staring death in the face. But God said to that fellow, he says, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. The final words, O I of a dying man. Remember the, I told you the story, I think the last time when the Lord, when we were preaching that message, I used to buy stuff of me called Joe McNamee working a pub in a Gaelic club outside the Moy. His mate who was young and him threw him over a 20 pound note and he says, here Joe, change it into two tenors for me. And Joe opened the till. And his mate turned around and he says, ah Joe. Down he went. And that was it all over. That's the last word he said. Ah Joe. And the doctor said he was dead before he hit the ground. You ever wonder what you're going to say for the last time? Because every one of us will have some final thing to say. That's if the Lord tarries. But the Lord tonight's going to speak to us in another way. Not the final words of a dying man, but the first words of a dead man. Because in this very passage of Scripture, we hear the first words a dead man spoke. The first words, a, not a dying man, a dead man. The first words a dead man spoke. Do you ever think of it? Luke 16, come with me to verse 22. We'll just read the obituary. First of all, his obituaries in verse 22. 
And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Now, that's a lovely bit today. But here's the rich man. The rich man also died and was buried. Boys, there wasn't much said about his death. I don't know whether he died peacefully. I don't know whether he died after a long illness. I don't know whether he died suddenly. He died anyway and was buried. Verse 23, And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, here's the first thing a dead man ever said. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. The first words a dead man spoke. 22, he's dead. Verse 22, he's buried. He's in the ground. But beyond his death and beyond his burial, this man speaks. The first words a dead man spoke. I want the first of all, of all, more so it's the Lord, because it's the Lord's message, not mine. The Lord wants us to see tonight these are factual words. They're factual. They were words that have been really spoken. There's one thing, dear friend, this evening. We don't hear this man talking in life. He doesn't say anything in life. You read the story, you don't hear him uttering a word. But I'll tell you, he's doing plenty of talking now. After he's gone. He doesn't say anything, he doesn't speak anything. But I'm telling you, we hear he's got plenty to say in death. None to say in life. But he's plenty to say in death. Do you know what that proves to me, young saved friend? I'll tell you what this proves to me. This proves to me that nobody dies like a dog. This man, this dead man's first words after death tells me tonight that after death there's a reality. Job 10, 14 tells us man death. That's factual. There's no escape in that bit. And wasteth away. That's natural. But where is he? Oh, now that's eternal. That's the question. Where is he? Beyond the grave. Beyond the coffin. Beyond the decay. This man speaks. Do you see when you die, love? Do you see when you die, sir? You don't die like a dog. After death, you have feelings. After death, you have faculties. And according to this passage, after death, you've got memories. Son, remember in your lifetime. You see, this man says in verse 22, the Bible says he died. He was buried. And he's now crying. These are factual words. You see, friends, this evening, listen, it doesn't end with Alex Spears. and it doesn't end with Jimmy on it. I'll tell you, that's when it all begins, really. You see, God's going to take us beyond the funeral. God's going to take us beyond the grave tonight and listen to a man who's dead. 
A man who's on the other side. God's going to let us listen to a man who's beyond the coffin, beyond the grave. And these are factual words I'm telling you. I remember in my previous employment, I was witness to this fellow and I pulled out a measuring tape. And I says, now the Bible tells us, and it's one of a good measuring tape too, for it, last, it lasted the 70 inches. Say, so what age are you, boss? Don't tell me your age, but put your finger on the tape where you are. And he was 68. So say, so boss, you've come a brave road. But you haven't much ahead of you. You know what he said to me? He says, I know I haven't. But what lies beyond the tape scares me. Does it scare you? I remember one night, 2009, I think it was. It was January anyway. And I was invited to preach at Drumlock Presbyterian Church. It was an elders' outreach night, and I was invited to preach the gospel. It was a dark and a very windy night, and I had to walk around the graveyard to make my way to the minister's vestry. And I remember looking at the different headstones. And I looked at the headstones and I said to myself, somewhere in eternity. Every headstone points us to eternity. And you know, friends, this evening I can tell you there's more lies told in a graveyard than there is in the opera house at Belfast. More headstones will tell you, the Lord's my shepherd. And the boy that lived that life and died the death, he died a drunkard. But the Lord is a shepherd according to the headstone. I don't know what was in this boy's headstone. Maybe peace, perfect peace. You'll get more lies in a graveyard than you'll get anywhere else. But listen to this dead man as he speaks tonight. You know the first thing he asks for? You see, here's not only factual words, now we're going to get to grips with it really. Here's the fearful words. They're fearful words. This man who's dead, this man who's buried, this man's in the ground, and he's decaying, but he's saying, I am tormented. In this flame, notice the first thing he cries for. He cries for mercy. I'll tell you the one thing he didn't ask. He didn't ask why he was there. Why am I here, Abraham, for? Should I have done the best I can? Should he not realize I went to my church and all the rest? This man didn't have to ask the question why he was in hell. Do you know what that tells me? Nobody will ever have to ask the question why they're there, because as soon as they open their eyes in hell, they'll realize why they're there. Notice the first thing he's crying for. He's crying for mercy. Boys, the last thing on his mind on earth, the last thing in his mind, mercy, what did I want mercy for? The last thing in his mind on earth, I'll tell you, was the first thing in his mind in eternity. There's a whole lot of people, you know, in the kingdom of mourn. The last thing in their mind is about getting saved. There's a lot of people in the kingdom of mourn tonight, the last thing in their mind is about getting right with God. There's a lot of people in the kingdom of mourn tonight and right across our province, and the last thing in their mind is about preparing to meet God. The last thing in their mind. I'll tell you, it'll be the la first thing in their mind when they die. Oh, this man. <laughs> mercy wasn't in his mind in life, but I'll tell you, mercy's on his mind now, Ori. I'll tell you, dear, You'll find mercy now 
Because glory to God, he delighteth in mercy. But you'll never find it if you're lost in hell. This man could have all the mercy that he wanted. Ah, but he had to turn before he died. He's turning now, but it's too late. And I'll tell you something else about this man's words. These are fearful words. He not only cried for mercy, but he cried for a man. The last man on his mind on earth was the first man on his mind in eternity. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus. Lazarus to this man was a nobody. He was a nothing in life here who's the own boy. The one's only a dog he ate and crumbs at the end of my table, but I'll tell you, he's thinking about him now in a different way. I'll tell you now, you see, a friend, maybe the Lord Jesus is the last person in your mind now. Last person in your mind. I'll tell you now, he'll be the first person in your mind if you're lost. He'll be the first person in your mind if you die unsaved. These are fearful words, not just because he's crying for mercy, not just because he speaks of a man. These words are fearful words spoken by a dead man because they speak of misery. For I am tormented in this flame. Oh, friend, I can tell you, every person Every person that dies unsaved, that's their cry. I am tormented in this flame. This man's dead, remember. This man's buried, remember. But this man, his first words on the other side were, I am tormented in this flea. I'll tell you, do you ever try holding your finger in a flame of a candle? Not a blow torch or anything like that there. A candle. Light a candle sometime. Don't try this at home. <laughs> you, you can just imagine it lighting a candle and you holding your finger for five seconds in that flame you won't be able to stick it. Yet the pain of that naked flame doesn't compare to the torment of the flame in hell. There's a question you need to ask yourself before you die. No matter who you are, what you are, anything else, here's one question you need to ask yourself. And I'll tell you where you can actually find it. You can actually find it in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 33 and verse 14, listen to what it says. Who amongst us? Who amongst us? Are you listening? Who amongst us shall dwell in the devouring fire? You need to get that a question asked and answered. Who amongst us? shall dwell in the devouring fire. Who amongst us shall dwell with everlasting burning? This is a dead man, remember. A dead man. And that's how this first sentence he ever uttered, after death finished, I am tormented in this flame. You wouldn't want that. These are factual words. These are fearful words. Finally, these are eternal words. From the moment that man died to the moment that you and I are in the Kilkeel Baptist tabernacle, that cry has not diminished. 
as torment hasn't eased, never remain ceased. They haven't eased. The lady's still crying, I'm tormented. And do you remember how the Lord Jesus described this? It says, he said, their worm, that's the boil who dies unsaved, their worm dieth not because it's eternal. And the fire is not quenched because it's eternal. And that boy's crying yet. He's crying yet. And there's millions crying with them. They're singing from the same hymn sheet, I am tormented in this flame. Finally, the sad part of the story is it didn't have to be this way. And it doesn't have to be this way for you, love, or for you, dear, or sir. The greatest verse in the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, and I want you to know that God loves you. And God's not willing that you should perish. But God for so loved the world. Does he really love me, George? You better count he loves you. Because he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, whosoever repents of their sin and puts their trust in Christ, listen to this, should not perish. That's the greatest promise in John 3, 16. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. My dear unsaved friend this evening, you don't have to perish. There's no need to perish. The Savior has died on the cross to save you. I give unto my sheep, the Lord Jesus said, eternal life, not religion. I give unto my sheep eternal life, and they shall never perish. Christ died to save you from going down to this love. Christ died to save you from going down to this, sir. Friends, that you should not perish. But come to Christ tonight, who alone can and who alone must, must save. The first words a dead man spoke, their factual words, their fearful words, aye, but their eternal words, this doesn't end, you know. No sinner needs to perish because a Savior suffered and bled and died on the cross that none needs perish. And all I'm asking you to do tonight is come to the Savior. Make no delay lest this man's experience will be yours. The Lord Jesus says him, that cometh to me, no matter who he is, what he's done, I shall in no ways cast out. I'll save him. I'll save her. And their sins will I remember no more. Let's take a wee moment. We'll bow and pray. Lord, tonight, these things have been written to show us the necessity of salvation and trusting the Savior. And Lord, tonight, 
even through the first words of this man who was dead, spoken after he was dead, is enough to show us and to warn us. Let none be careless tonight. Give deciding grace, we pray. It's through our Savior's name we ask it. Amen. Now we're going to sing 124, please. Verses 1 through